it's Sarah from Little Rockers Radio and the Rocking Motherhood Show here. I'm with Natalie from yes. Wonder Woman Children. Hi, everyone. Who is our expert in the area of children and infants first. Certainly not an expert in children. Just no. say. <laughs> <laughs> children's first say. Don't know what we're doing about kids. <laughs> talking about allergies and anaphylaxis yes and um introducing food to well not introducing food to our kids but food allergies with our children yeah you know i think a lot of people i, I have here with me because i just wanted to quickly show you um what i've got here these are just some epi pens a lot of new parents that i talk to um are really scared of allergies i've heard stories of parents being in the car park of royal children's hospital or any hospital introducing high allergen foods for the first yes. time because they're so scared that they might experience what we're all a little bit scared of is anaphylaxis. Mm, mm. Mm. So if a child has something that they are allergic to that we don't know of, what, what might show? Rashes? Yeah, yeah. So look, you know, um, all the guidelines on when and how to introduce foods is changing. But the biggest message that we're getting across is don't avoid foods that you might consider dangerous. So if I was going to ask you what foods do you think cause anaphylaxis the most, what would come to your mind straight away? Nice. Nuts, right? Um, your, your tree nuts, uh, dairies is probably yeah. another common yeah. one. Um, what are the dairy, tree nuts. So there's all different ones, Fish. yeah? Fish, yes, seafood, yep. yeah. So we all get a bit like, oh no, let's not introduce those foods. Um, I'm really scared of them. Um, introduce them and introduce them early when recommended. Don't delay it. That's the main message we need to send. Um, the other thing that I want to discuss, Sarah, um, is because often I hear parents that say to me, okay, I've introduced foods, and I don't know whether you had this with your kids, but yeah. I certainly experienced it with eggs and strawberry. Okay. So I, I remember introducing eggs for the first time. And my daughter got a big rash around her face. Right. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this, yeah, right? Yeah. And a lot of parents then say, I'm so scared of anaphylaxis that then I hold off that food. Yes. I want to make note that that reaction is a super rea superficial reaction. And it's more because of their skin probably hasn't had contact with acidity from strawberry and stuff like that. So the current guidelines is to reintroduce it in small amounts. But yes, of course, keep a diary. And you'll find the next time you introduce it, that rash will go down. Okay, so what happens if you do introduce something for the first time and they are severely allergic to it or they, they do um, go into, I don't know, anaphylactic shock. Like, what, what, what do you do and how much time do you have if you're at home, a mum, and you've put something on the table, they've never had it before, and yeah. you think it's going to be okay? What, yeah. Tell me what sort of pans out after it, that. It's, it's, pretty scary. it's pretty scary. I, I, I definitely agree. A um, few things to note. What's the difference between mild, moderate, and severe allergies? Yes. Okay. Mild and moderate, superficial. So you might expect, what are some things you might expect? Have your children had allergies before? Yeah, they have, but yeah. mainly Yes, yes, so, perfect. So you yeah. expect some rashes. Yeah. Or my, my tongue's a little bit itchy. Yeah, a bit or, itchy, yeah. yeah, itchy on the face, eyes yeah. swelling over. Yeah. My daughter got that from some cats, the whole eyes swelled over mm. and it looks really scary. Yes. That's a mild or moderate allergy. Yeah. A severe allergy, which essentially is anaphylaxis, is when the airways will close over, so your body goes, oops, I don't like that, let's block everything off. Yes. And because of the closure of the airway, no oxygen, they can go unconscious mm, mm. Within, within a minute. And let me tell you, it's not just kids. It's, it's yes. happening to adults. It's happening to my grandmother at 70. Yeah. Um, just recently someone passed away, some footballers. Yeah. Coaches' so sons. Something about that. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is me, old grandmother's tale. Yeah. So this is not advice. Not <laughs> this is a question. Yeah, okay. But I quite often, um, and I'm probably embarrassed to even say this on the video. No, we like I it. quite like often, it. you know, if I'm introducing something to the kids for the first time, I'm like, okay, but have I got Zyrtec in the cupboard? Yeah, okay. Like, is that, All right, that yeah. might be a really silly question. No, a lot of parents... Okay, so antihistamines will not work on a severe allergy. Yeah. Let me tell you that. If they've got anaphylaxis, you're not slowing anything down by having an antihistamine. You're not buying time. You're not buying nothing. time. And I hear it all the time, okay? If you, if you really do have anaphylaxis, um, it's an emergency and nothing will work. But Anything. your EpiPens, which should be everywhere at schools... Um, and if your child is at risk, you will see a specialist who will give you one. And this is basically full of adrenaline. I guess that does come to question, though. Another concern we have is if my child does have a mild or moderate allergy, is it going to turn into anaphylaxis? Yes. Is that a likelihood? Yes. Um, and it's not, okay? Just because your child has a mild or moderate uh, allergy does not mean that it's going to turn into anaphylaxis. But maybe we should talk about some of the hot signs, hot, you know, red flags yes. of when you do have anaphylaxis, what does it look like? Yeah, how long does it take? What does yeah, it look like? It doesn't take long, do? right? But it's affecting your airway. It starts systemically affecting you. So you might just get really sick in the belly, vomiting, itchy throat, tongue, mouth swelling. Um, so the minute it's anaphylaxis, it means it's going to affect your airways. They're going to get disorientated, 
and essentially become unconscious pretty rapidly. Right. And if it happens and you don't have a pen, you're doing CPR. Right, okay. And when you say those things happen, are you saying that that happens over the case of five, ten minutes, over the case of an hour? Oh, it can like, be one minute. Right. One minute. But it is very fast. So you're not going to be sitting there having had something and then two hours later yes. you're going into Um Look, you know, there's certain stories. There's a few grey areas, right? First thing, we don't actually know where, how anaphylaxis does its thing. So it, it supposedly doesn't exist in... It only exists in developed countries, supposedly, right? right. So if you go to a third world country... Um, there won't be many reports of anaphylaxis. Why? Who knows? There's still a debate to why it's such an epidemic, Maybe right? Not reported. Not reported. Is it the way we source our food locally or internationally? You know, a lot of third world countries will source their own food through their own farming. So mm -hmm. is it because of that? Mm -hmm. You can have that debate on your own, but there is actually no... Um, there's nothing that we know definitely for sure what's going on. So you might hear cases where people say... Um, my daughter gets a sign of anaphylaxis and nothing happens for 20 minutes. So I have time to drive myself to the hospital. I hear it all the time. And there is cases. It's not worth the risk. Just treat every single child that's at risk of anaphylaxis like it's going to happen in minutes. Because maybe it was 20 minutes last time, but it might just be two this time. Yes. But your treatment is really calling triple zero and doing straight away hour if, they're, if they've lost. Yeah, and you don't have a pen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Which if it's a, and that's probably my fear. Yeah. Because if it's the first time... Why would you have a pen if you're in the home? Absolutely, and this is why everyone wants a pen. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But, but the thing is, you know, um, don't, most of the time it won't happen on first occasion, okay? Most of the time, if your child is anaphylactic, the first time you give it, you'll notice something, and the next time you give it, you get notice something more. That's usually the case. The second thing I want to bring up is anaphylaxis, people say it can be through inhalation, yeah? It can right. be through touch. Or it can be through ingestion. The right. one thing I want to make note is most cases of anaphylaxis is via ingestion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So keep an eye on them. Um, the minute it is affecting airways or they're vomiting or they've got a sore stomach, go to your GP and get your hand on a specialist ASAP. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that it's important for um, parents, teachers, carers, all those sorts of people to be doing first aid so we know, even if we don't have children who yeah. have babies, so we know how to administer or how to use an EpiPen because I wouldn't have a clue. You showed me that and I thought it was a highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not a highlighter. It is an EpiPen. Actually, let's do a quick demo. They're pretty ridiculously easy to use. And you're right. When I have a kids' party now, and please, I think it always has to be with some of our considerations, is asking if a child has an allergy. Yes, and I do yes. have to make a cake a bit differently now. And because I often, and, and you know, this is personal opinion, right? Not yeah. professional. Yeah. Um, but I've been to parties where that hasn't been in consideration and there's a child crying because they can't eat the birthday cake. Yeah. And I do hear sometimes parents going, oh, but why should I have to cater for that one child who has allergies? I'm bringing it up because it's certainly, I've heard it before. Yeah. Um, I personally may. I, I certainly want to make sure every child is included and I don't want any child with allergies or anaphylaxis or asthma ever feeling like they're different. Yes, so worked out. Yeah. definitely think about it. Um, but if a child gets dropped off and they do have anaphylaxis, you should ask the parents to bring this with them. Really important. Again, yes. I've heard people going, you won't need it this time. I'm not going to be far, so if you need it, just mm. call me. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah take your kid back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> take yeah. your kid back! No, yeah. take... <laughs> or stay. stay. I would be so scared. I'd be like, stay. No, so no, no, no. <laughs> but we've got to give these parents a break too, right? Because <laughs> it's pretty stressful having a child with anaphylaxis. Yes. But anyway, these pens, you can get testers, give it a whirl, come to one of our classes. No thumb rule, so you can't, it's a needle, right? And it's going to go through clothing, and in this needle is adrenaline. It needs to go into muscle, so you pop it to the thigh, upper thigh. You remove a safety and it's just a matter of pushing it in. Ooh. Okay, there was a tester. Okay. <laughs> the minute it's in, you want to count to 10 to make sure the medication's gone in and give it a rub. The one thing I want to make note though, this is like gastro stop to gastro. It won't stop anaphylaxis, but it will allow them to breathe. Okay. Yes. So again, now the recommendation is let's get the kid to have a spare pen. So most schools and everything should be setting this up. Because five minutes later, they might get all the signs and symptoms again. And the paramedics aren't there yet. So you do have all permission now. This is one use only. So you'd be using a second pen and pushing to the paramedics. And now. if the child is kicking and screaming um, and you're doing that, I assume you have to hold them quite still in order to be able to get it in. And you're not... 100%. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, if you yeah. don't, look, it happens. Um, just report it back to the paramedics. Should we let Sarah have a practice? Oh, yeah. Do you want to have a practice on my leg? All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. All right. So stop kicking and screaming. All right, so we pop that here. <laughs> we take this safety thing off. Yeah, push it in. We push. Count we to ten. Wait for ten. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but slower than that. Yes, and give it a little take rub. It off and we rub oh, it. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Here we go. <laughs> All right, and I've just saved your life. Thank you. Yes, I'll take that tester for you. Life. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's really good to know because, I, like I said, I've actually never seen an EpiPen before and I did think when you took them out of your bag that you were about to highlight some, <laughs> some notes before you. So it's good. It's good to know. It's it good, good for to us know. to know first aid. It's good for parents, the community in general to know first aid. And uh, Natalie is obviously very big on community first aid yes. and education. Visit her website, www.wonderwomanchildren.com. Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone.